Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining today's session. We're going to be starting shortly, shortly. Okay. Been a while. I hope that you have enjoyed your Easter time, that you went to the beach and that you had a lot of fun. It's very important for you to enjoy yourself, especially on vacation time. So now we are back with chess and uh, let's see what we're going to be learning today. Okay, it's a tournament today as well. Nice tournament. Let's see who is going to win that tournament. Looking forward to um, to see who will claim the victory for that one. Okay. Um, not many people on the live as yet, but I guess that will be increasing in the next five to ten minutes. Okay. And let's see how that goes. All right. So I will just stop this one here. Let's see here. Let's see how many so far in the tournament. Only nine in the tournament. Okay, so today is moving a little bit slow, but don't worry because this is going to be growing very, very quickly. Okay, and uh, let me just go on to chess base because we're going to start today um, with the, uh, we're learning a little bit about the game. Okay, so remember that sometimes we have um, new players. Okay, uh, we have new players and let's see how that goes for those new players that are now learning the very basics of the game. Okay. Okay. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget. Don't forget to hit like. Okay. And uh, let's get started then. So the first ten minutes, I will talk a little bit about some basic stuff for the beginners. Remember that. Um, yeah, every term, um, every school term, there are some beginners that are now learning how to play the game. So let's uh, start by giving them some advice about the game. Okay, some uh, don't even know much about the game. So I will take the first 10 minutes to target a little bit uh, of the beginners, but I don't want any one of you to leave. Stay put right there because right after I will be moving to the um, um, regular students that are always here on Mondays to enjoy the um, chess tournament and the chess training. So um, let's see. Uh, today there is a tournament and I will just take a little poll to see who is going to win the tournament, but not, not as yet. Let's go with the beginners one time. Okay, so let's see. So the first thing that we're going to do here is talk about the name of the pieces okay let's talk a little bit about the name of the pieces so i will start with this one um this one is called a rook okay so this is a rook um, next to the rook is um, the knight next to the knight is the bishop next to the bishop is the king and then then the, we have the queen up here we have the Pawn. So all of those up there are pawns. So let's repeat the name of the pieces. So we have rook up here, knight, bishop, king, queen, and pawns. Okay. So those are the names of the chess pieces. All right. Remember, let's repeat them one more time. Rook, knight, bishop, king, and queen. Okay. And then we have the Pawns. It is very important also that we um, learn the value of the pieces because when we are playing a chess game, there are trades that are good and there are there are trades that are bad. What are trades in chess? Well, when you exchange one piece for another piece, we call that a trade. Okay, so we could have in chess good trades, bad trades, and we could have fair trades, which will be the normal trades and to work with trades, we have to have a good understanding of the value of our pieces. Okay, so we have to understand the value of our pieces. And uh, let's go with the value of the pieces then. For example, the pawn is the piece that has the least value 
and the pawn is worth one point. But don't get me wrong, eh? the pawn is also very important. A lot of people when they play chess, they say, okay, it's just a pawn, but do not really take that approach so much. If you lose a pawn in a chess game, a pawn could mean losing the whole game. As you get stronger as a chess player, you will understand this. If you get to lose a pawn in one of your games, you could lose the entire game just based on that little pawn that you lost. Now, it's not the same thing as if you sacrifice a pawn. If you, on purpose, you willingly give away one of your pawns because you want to create an attack and stuff like that, that is a whole different story. But in chess, if you just lose a pawn for the sake of losing a pawn, you could just lose the game as well. But pawns, okay, are worth one point each. Okay, so a pawn is worth one point. Now, um, let's go to the other pieces. We have on the board also the rook. The rook is worth five points. Okay, so five points is the value of a rook. A knight is worth three points and the bishop, is also worth three points, okay? So we have, um, okay, welcome everyone, welcome, welcome. So we have the rook on five points, the knight on three points, the bishop on three points. Remember the pawn on one point. We have the king, which is worth the whole game, okay? So remember in a chess game, if your king gets checkmated, you lose the game, okay? So you have to understand that the king is the most important piece on the board. And then we have the queen, which is worth nine points. Okay, so let's go with the value. One, five, three, three, the whole game, or a thousand points, and nine points mm -hmm. for the queen. Let me put this phone in silence so it wouldn't vibrate. And let's continue. All right, now. Now that we know the name of the pieces and the value of the pieces, I want to talk a little bit about the chess board. Okay? Notice that I'm just going to give um, a little bit of time for the beginners, but not a lot of time. And when I say for the beginners, it's for those who do not know anything about the game. But I know that most of you in this class already know how to move the pieces, already know how the name of the pieces, and have already played in the tournament. Okay? So let's see now about the chessboard a little bit. So to talk about the chessboard, I will just clear the board and uh, I will have in, uh, an empty board in front of us. Okay, so we have an empty board in front of us and let's talk a little bit about the chessboard. So on the chessboard, we have certain elements that we have to pay attention to. Okay, because this is like a chess language, learning about the chessboard will help you to learn chess language, which is extremely important in as a chess player, okay? Now, in chess, we have files. Files are the squares that go up and down. So we call this group of squares files. Each file has a name. The name of the file is the letter that the file has. For example, this one will be the A file. This is the B file, C file, D file, E file, F file, G file, and H file. If you already know this as a beginner, congratulations, you are doing well. Now, on the board we have eight files, okay? Remember, these are files. So if I'm talking about a game or explaining something, and I tell you something like, okay, I'm going to try to control the F file, you know already what I'm talking about. Or if I tell you, be careful with the H file, you know already what I'm talking about, okay? Now, let's go to another element of the board, and this one is the ranks. So ranks are the squares or the group of squares that go across. And for those group of squares, we go according to the numbers. So we say first rank, second rank, third rank, fourth rank, fifth rank, sixth rank, seventh rank, and eighth rank. So on the board, we have eight ranks. So notice, files, the, the group of squares that go vertically, ranks, the group of squares that go horizontally. Okay, so very easy. On the board, we also have diagonals. Diagonal is the group of squares that are slanted or in a diagonal position like this. Okay, so these are diagonals. Diagonals are either light square diagonal or dark square diagonals, okay? So it's either you have a light square diagonal or a dark square 
diagonal. So all of these are diagonals. There are some pieces that move on files and ranks. There are some pieces that move on diagonals. Okay, they move along diagonals, some of them. All right. Now, let's um, talk a little bit about the squares now. And pay attention to this part on the squares because I will be asking some questions because I want you to be active on the chat as well. Okay. So now, on the chessboard, we have squares. Each one of these boxes is called a square. Okay. Each one of these boxes is called a square. So, and squares also have names. So, each one of, of the squares has a name. The name of this square will be the letter plus the number. Okay, let's take some example. For example, this one here is called A1. You see, letter A, number 1, A1. This one is A2. Letter A, number 2, A2. This one is A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8. So, you see, there are the name of the squares. Okay. A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8. Now, let's go to this group. B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, B8. It is actually very easy. The letter plus the number. And when we write name of squares, we should use common letters, not capital letters. In chess, the capital letters are used to refer to the pieces. Okay, so if we are talking about pieces, we use capital letters. If we're talking about, about pawns or squares, we, talk, we use um, common letters. So now what I will do, I will highlight five squares. And let's see who will be the top three people in the chat that will write the name of those squares. So who will be the fast ones that will be able to type the name of those squares. So get ready to type because I'm going to be showing you um, five squares. And let's see which are the ones that type very fast and could just write the name of that square okay so i hope that um all of you will get this one so let's see let's see getting ready what square will i put first let's go with this one name this square let's see let's go on the chat let me check the chat and see okay welcome everyone that square very good so first First to write was Sadia Rasak. Second was Olivia Williams. And third was Sherry Belfon. Okay, very good. We also have Gabriel, Sian, Marshall, Kirill, Ilan. Okay, so, all right. F5, very good, very good. So you got that one. Let's go now to another square. So I'm going to be naming five. So get ready. The other square will be... This one here. What's the name of that square? Let's see who can write the name of that square. Let's go to the chat. Who is first? Who, who will come first for this one? Who is first in typing that one? And first place went to Olivia Williams. Congratulations on your first place. Olivia type H8 and H8 is correct. So we have Olivia. We have Sadia. We have Sherry Belfon. We have Gabriel and we have Isabel as well. Okay. Okay, many of you got it correct. Very good, very good. So we have two, two so far. We have three more to go, three more to go. Name of the squares. What about this one over here? Name the square. Who is first for this one? Who is first for this one? Let's see who gets this one first. Who gets this one first? Let's go, let's go, let's go. D2, very good. D2, D2, very good. First in this case, again, was Olivia Williams. Olivia Williams is, you know, winning everything here. So we have Olivia Williams, we have Cherry, we have Liesel, we have Sian. Very good, very good. Two more, two more. Let's go with this one over here. What's the name of that square? Let me see who gets this one first. Okay, we have, okay, Lemue Belfon. Okay, very good. Okay, who is first in this one? G2, G2, G2. Olivia again. Wow, Olivia is not leaving a space for anyone. She wants everything. Let's see. Very good, very good. Make sure if you are using your phone or tablet, make sure 
you click on live to make to um to make sure that you are in sync with us all right because you may actually be lower down in the video if you are not right where the video is at the moment okay so make sure that you are totally in the live video and not looking at the part that we went through already say so, okay so we have four one more to go one more to go so let's see one more to go and that one will be right here name that square name that square let me see who has the name of that square very easy very easy okay <laughs> in this case Belfon got it first f3 very good olivia second with f3 Aza with f3 as well add stewart with f3 cian Sadia, Gabriel, very good. So that is it with the name of the squares. Now, what I will do here, notice that I say that I will not actually um, spend a lot of time in this part only because I have to target also those um, players that already know how to move the pieces. And I think that is the majority of you. However, to the um, to the groups in this channel, actually there is a, uh, there are videos on my channel. There's a play playlist that teaches you how to move the pieces from scratch, everything from scratch about the chessboard, how to move each one of the pieces. Okay, I will share that on the WhatsApp group as well. So you all could uh, go through it during the week. So by the time next Monday comes, you already know how to move the pieces. All right. So let's go now with... Um, Let's go now and start from here. And what I want to talk about today is playing a good chess game. Okay, if I look at some of your games before, and I will be looking at some of them, first I will show you here, notice I will show you here what are the principles of a good chess game. If you are playing a good chess game, there are certain things that you have to follow to make sure you have a good chess game. Okay, now... Number one is to control the center. And this one is the easiest one. All you have to do is take the pawn in front of the king. See, the pawn that is in front of the king. And move that pawn two squares forward. So that is not difficult. This is, if you are playing online, you just grab your pawn in front of the king and move it two squares forward. Very easy. And if you are playing with the black pieces, you just do the same. You grab the pawn that is in front of, the, of your king and you move it two squares forward. Okay? So I don't think that that is difficult. That is the concept of controlling the center. So that is concept number one. Let's control the center when we are playing a chess game. So we are going to play a good game. So in the tournament today, I want to see everyone with this position. So all games should start from here. So avoid just pushing any kind of pawns. You want to use the correct pawns in the game. Remember, moving your pawns is a very critical moment if you move wrong pawns then you have a very bad game and you most likely will go on to lose the game soon or later okay now so moving the king in front of the pawn two squares forward easy pawn in front of the king two squares forward you can't go wrong with that one after that it's time the next concept is bring out your pieces develop your pieces so what means to develop your pieces meaning it means to get your pieces ready but put them in good squares okay we're going to put our pieces in good squares so for white pieces now white start with knight f3 this is a very nice move the knight comes out so it's being developed and the knight is attacking this pawn so the knight is threatening to capture the pawn on e5 black plays here knight to c6 and from c6 the knight defends the pawn so now notice why, but he brought out the knight, okay? So white brings out a piece, black brings out a piece. Following the concept of develop your pieces. Now here, white follows up with bishop to c4, bringing out his bishop, developing the second piece in the game. White here has a lead in development. And this is very important. When you're playing with the black pieces, pay attention to your development. Because remember, white plays first, so white has a move ahead. So he brings out a piece. You cannot just, just stay back and push a pawn. You have to make sure and bring one of your pieces out as well. So white brings out his bishop. If you are playing black, bring out your bishop to c5. 
White brought out his bishop to c4. Okay. Now, it is white to play here, and white is going to bring out another piece, knight to c3. So white brings out the knight to c3, and now white has one, two, three pieces developed, and one pawn control in the center. So black cannot remain behind. You cannot um, fall back in the development of your pieces. All right. So let me just close this door. The noise is coming in. Sorry about that. Okay, I am back. Now, notice you cannot fall back in the development of your pieces. So now, um, white has three pieces out, black has two pieces out, and black gets out one of his pieces as well to with the move knight to f6. Now, both players have three pieces develop, you see, and pawns control in the center. So this is a very this look like a professional game. If I look at if I go to a tournament and see this going on, I am already very proud of every student doing something like this. That means that the student learn these moves and these are just basic moves. If I put here on the side the notation, let me see. Okay, well no, the notation there doesn't seem to be so good. Okay, it's also good, but the move is e4, e5, just making sure that you bring out control the center. You make sure that you bring out your pieces, bring out your knight, bring out your bishops, okay? And now here, a special move, a very important move in a chess game. This move is called castle. This is move is extremely important. You just have to grab your king, if you are playing online, all right? You grab your king and you pull it towards the rook. You move it two squares, one, two, and you let it go. And now the move castle will happen. So you grab your king two squares, one, two, towards the rook, and you put the rook next to the king. But online, that will be just automatic. Okay? Now, why is this move so important? Let's talk about why is castle so important. Number one, notice that if I have a rook in the corner, like this one here, the rook cannot really do anything. Look at this rook, for example. Rooks are pieces that do not get to play early in the game. So if you try to get your rook to play early in the game, that's not a good thing. Rooks in general just do not play early in the game. And with castle, you actually activate your rook. Your rook comes from the corner closer to the center of the board. Then from here, you could put it here and have it more centralized. Okay. But the main purpose of castling is to take your king to the corner. Because since all the action is happening in the center of the board, the center of the board is where the war will start. All the captures, the exchanges, the attack will happen right there. And you do not want your king sitting right here in the middle of the board when that attack starts. So that is why we get to castle quickly. Now, is this over? This is all I'm supposed to do. Well, after that, this bishop needs to be also developed. It needs to come out, this, this bishop for white, this bishop for black. And to do that, I just move this pawn one square forward. Look at this. This pawn helps the center of the board. This pawn is protecting this pawn here. And it, may, it has made room for this bishop to come out. Black does the same, pushing this pawn, making room for his bishop to come out. And now the white bishop goes to the square g5 creating an attack against the knight, and behind the knight is the queen. So if you are playing black, remember, do not, by any means, move this knight. Do not, I repeat, do not move the knight, because then this bishop will take your queen, and you will lose your precious queen, which is worth 9 points. If you lose your queen like that, most likely you will lose the game, unless your opponent also return his queen to you. Something like that. Other than that, under normal circumstances, this game is going to be lost for black. So now, bishop comes to g5, and that means white got to develop his bishop. Look at this. One, two, three, four pieces out. You cannot remain done in development. But however, this part here is important. You need to bring out your bishop, but your bishop will not come here, you know, and copy in white's move. No, your bishop will come right here to challenge this bishop and to protect this square here. This square on d5 is a very, very important square. And this is one of the strategies that I will talk about today. 
okay? The strategy about why should we put this bishop on e6. A lot of people put this bishop here automatically, those who are paying attention to class as well, of course, but they do not understand exactly why should that bishop go there. Now, before we understand why the bishop moved there, we have to understand why did this bishop come here. So this bishop here creates a pin. Remember I told you that that knight should move because then you will lose the queen. No, because the queen is behind the knight. The whole problem here is you cannot just move your queen away from the defense of the knight. Let's say you just say decided, you know what? I do not want my queen to be my knight to be pinned to my queen, so I will just move my queen. This in in practice is so like, oh, this is good. You just you don't have to worry, you could move the knight after. But this is a problem here because your opponent will just eliminate your knight. And this will create a big problem. Pawn takes. Because it's an exchange, a knight, a bishop for a knight. And let's see what are the problems here. You see, now there is a big open file in front of your king. So your king has become weak. If that happens, then white gets to attack immediately. White gets to jump with this knight here. And he's creating multiple threats. This move that will create a double attack, that is one of the threats. And this one, which will create also a double attack with a check and you will lose your queen. If this knight lands on f6, that will be a check. If you are in check, you have to move your king, especially a check with the knight. Check, you move your king, and the knight will end up taking your queen. Let's see this happening in an example. Let's say here black decides to play pawn push, for example. Then white gets to play check. That means the, king, the knight is attacking the king and the queen. But the king is in check. If you are in check, meaning your king is under attack, you need to move your king because you are in check. And then the knight will just take the queen, and that means you lost your queen. If, for example, you decide, oh, let me just protect my pawn. I will protect my pawn with my king. Then here, why could play knight takes pawn on c7, and now he is attacking both your queen and your rook. You will save your, your queen because you don't want the knight to capture your queen, but then you will lose your rook. And all of a sudden, you have a disadvantage very early in the game. As soon as the pieces finish the development, you end up in a disadvantage. But let's go back. How did we reach here? Well, we reached here because after bishop um, g5, someone decided to move the queen from the defense of the knight. And that is a bad move. So you have to allow your queen to continue defending the knight. And remember, white's idea is to bring this knight here. Now, that is why you should play bishop e6. So if white brings his knight forward, which is still a good move, black should capture that knight with the bishop, eliminate the knight. And then bishop takes, and this position is just equal. Remember, it was a fair trade, a bishop for a knight. Both of them have the same value. So there, is, there are no problems with this. Just remember if you are playing black here, not to take that bishop because this bishop will take your queen. Remember, your knight is pinned and pinned pieces should not be moving around. Okay. Now, so that is why you put this bishop on e6 to defend the d5 square. But what if you decide that you don't want to put that bishop there? Yeah, you want to push a pawn. A lot of players like to push pawns. And my advice for you for the tournament today or for when you play chess at school or whenever you play chess is stop pushing a lot of pawns. Notice in this game, I focus on developing the pieces. I focus on castling. And when I move the pawns, I move the pawns with purpose. The purpose was control the center, okay? And with this pawn here, making room for the bishop to come out and give extra support to the center. Now let's say white black decided to play pawn to a6, just pushing a pawn instead of bringing out the bishop. Then white plans, white's plan comes to action. Knight to d5, creating now a lot of pressure on this knight that is defended by the queen and by this pawn, but this time it's attacking by the bishop, it's being attacked by the bishop and by the knight. What is the problem here? This here will force you to increase your concentration during the game if you are playing black. Because if you forget that you shouldn't move this knight and you go capturing this knight, remember, you will lose your queen. Okay, so be very careful with that. So now 
this knight of yours and the position in front of your king is compromised. It's in danger. No, why is that? Can I just bring my bishop out now? Yes, you can, but then knight takes knight, check. The knight is attacking your king and has just captured your knight. You see, this knight came and captured your knight. You have to take this knight, but you have to take it with pawn. You shouldn't take it with queen because then the bishop will take your queen. So you take with pawn. Let's follow what happened in this game. Look at this game, eh? because this game actually happened some time, or some time ago. This bishop comes here attacking the rook. The bishop is worth three points. The rook is worth five points. The player with the black pieces say, no, 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 no. I will not allow my rook, which is worth five points, to be taken or exchanged for a bishop that is worth, worth only three points. Common sense kicks in. Black saves his rook. But the game doesn't finish there. White now decides, decides to send more pieces close to where the enemy king is. See? White here says, oh, you see, black is uh, white is coming to attack me, says the black player. Let me just exchange some pieces. So black goes with the move. Bishop takes. Bishop takes bishop. And at this point of time, Black was expecting the move pawn takes bishop. Okay, if you take one of my pieces, I should retake. But white actually had a better idea. Let me see in the chat. Who can find the best move here for white? Very strong winning move here for white. Anyone in the chat could find a winning move here for white? What will the move be? What will the move be? Let's go, let's go, let's go. What will the move be here? Hmm. White to play. White has a big move that will lead to checkmate in just two moves. Let's see. Gabriel says queen to g4 and queen g4 is the move. Look at this. The knight is close to the enemy king. The bishop especially is close to the enemy king. And now the queen comes to g4 attacking the king. The queen is the strongest piece. The coronal, you know, the, the, the soul of the attack is the queen. That is how it's called in chess. Queen to g4, check. The queen attacks the king with a check. There is no way to capture the queen, and the king only has one place to run to. It cannot go here because there is a bishop there, and you cannot put your king in danger. So black moves the king to h8, but now comes the move queen to g7, and this end up being checkmate. So remember, checkmate is when your king is in check and has nowhere to go. That is checkmate. Game is over. And there's, there's literally nothing to do. If you get checkmated, you get checkmated. You cannot escape from checkmate. All right. Now, since we are talking about checkmate, let's take a look at a couple of checkmates. So I will go for this one. I will go to lead chess. Let me see how many people in the tournament. There are, let me see, wow, there are 17 people in the tournament and there are 36 of you here. So what I will do, look at this, eh? before I go and solve some checkmates, I will go on this chat here. Let me just get the link for the tournament because I want you all to join the tournament. You know, um, If I want you to join the tournament, what I will do is very simple. I will just share the tournament link with you. Let me find the tournament link. I will share the tournament link with you. And by sharing the tournament link with you, you will be able to join the tournament. Okay, link has been copied. And uh, let me just put the tournament link right here. Yes, this is the tournament link. So you could just click on that link and join the tournament. Let me just refresh this page. 19 of you in the tournament. Um, I might play in the tournament because I want to analyze the games while the game is going on. I want to analyze what is going on. I might play. Other than that, I might go in the tournament and analyze your games. Okay, But analyzing some of my games is good because in that way, I could afterwards, well, afterwards, you could go through the and YouTube video, look at the analysis of the game and see how I was winning the games and why I was winning the games and what kind of mistakes 
they are being made in the uh, tournament. Okay, so that is very important for you to um, learn about the game. Okay, so it's very important that you pay attention so you can learn about the game. Okay, so now let's go with um, checkmate. So I'll pull another one here and uh, I'll click on learn. Just I'll go to practice. I think on practice they are checkmate. Please checkmate here. They have checkmate patterns here. I think they have they should have mating one. Okay, so yeah, puzzles. I will go here to puzzle teams and I will find mating one. Let's see if I could find check mating one move. Yeah, mating one. And I will go here and put it in the easiest. Okay, so it, right now it's in easiest. And let's see if you could find some of these. So in this position, okay, in this position, it is black to play. This one shouldn't be so difficult for you. Eh? It is black to play and win checkmate in one move. Look at this, eh? Black to play and win checkmate in one move. Who can see the checkmate in one move here? Black to play and win checkmate in one move. Who can see it? That is the big question here. Who can see the checkmate in one move? White to play. Black to play, sorry, checkmate in one move. You could type it on the chat if you have it. Oh, someone is asking why I didn't stream before. Well, because we were on vacation. Remember, all of us were on vacation. It was Easter vacation. So as you were on vacation, I was on vacation as well. Okay. Okay. Now, remember, it's black to play, not white to play. Black to play. White just played queen here. This was white's move, but it's black to play now. And yes, Aiden has it, which is queen to c2. Okay, queen to c2. Remember, it's black to play, and this is where the white queen is. So if it's black to play, it means black has to checkmate white. And in this position, look at this position. The bishop is here, and the queen is here. And we move in the queen to c2. The bishop will be protecting the queen. We will capture that pawn right in front of the white king, and that will mean checkmate. Look at this one here. Checkmate. Game is over. Black wins, as simple as that, okay? Black wins by checkmate. Why is this checkmate? Well, checkmate is when the king is in check, meaning a piece is attacking the king, and the king's, king has nowhere to go. In this position, the queen is attacking the king. The king will, would like to capture the queen, but the queen is protected by the bishop, and the king, therefore, cannot take the queen because the king cannot capture any piece that is protected, okay? So it's a, very, as simple as that. Now, this one here, again, it is black to play. Black to play, mate in one move. Who can find it here? Black to play, check mate in one move. Who can find it? Who can find it? Could write it in the chat. White, black to play, checkmate in one move. Black to play, checkmate in one move. Olivia say queen b2. Very good, Olivia. Queen takes b2. Look at this square. Notice, if you are playing black, if I say black to play and win by checkmate, the first thing that you have to look at is where is the white king. Why should you find where is the white king? Because it's the white king that we're going to checkmate. So if we're going to checkmate the white king, then we have to find which one of our black pieces in this case could attack the white king. So in this case, we have a queen and the queen is being protected by this bishop. This bishop is also like launching the queen all the way to b2. Notice that the, the bishop is literally supporting the attack of the queen. So the queen comes to b2 with the help of the bishop. And this is now checkmate. The queen captures the pawn right in front of the king. The king cannot take because the queen is protected by this bishop over here. So that is checkmate. Let's go to another one. Very good. Well done, um, Olivia. Let's go to another one. This one here. It is white to play checkmate in one move. So this is very simple. For example, 
if you have to checkmate someone, you have to look for checks. So this is the black king. Okay, this is the black king here. You have to find a move for white. You have to find checks. Checks are moves that attack the king. All right. So what piece do you have that can attack this king with a check? And where will you put that piece that so the so that the king will be in check, but the king should not have anywhere to go? Okay. So Eden says queen c8. And queen c8 is correct, but I want to go through all the checks. So queen c8 is checkmate because once I put my queen on c8, this is a check and the king will have nowhere to go. So this is very good. Now let's look at other checks. Queen here is check, but it's not checkmate because this knight could just take over queen. Um, queen here is also check, but it's not checkmate because then this bishop will take over queen. So those are the two other checks that we had in this position. But if we play queen to c8, this is checkmate. The queen checks the king. The king tries to move away, but it cannot go anywhere because the queen is right there and there is no escape, no place to go. So that is checkmate. So queen c8 is correct, checkmate. Now let's go to another one. The tournament is going to be starting shortly, shortly, okay, very shortly. Now, in this one, this one quite interesting. You have to find the move. It is, again, in this position, white to play, checkmate in one move. White to play, checkmate in one move. Let's see who will find this one. White to play, checkmate in one move. So don't forget, please, to subscribe to, you, to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click like on the live. Don't forget to click li like on the live. All right, and also share share the um, this um, stream with someone that you would like to learn how to play chess or that you would like to play chess with. Okay, share this live so they could also um, join the live and play. So what is the move here? Queen f3 says Aiden. Queen f3 says Taylor. Yes, Queen f3 is the move. Very interesting move here. Notice something that we have to know. When we look at the king, we have to pay attention. Where can the king go at the moment? And this king actually at the moment could only move here, here, and here. Those are the places that the king could move at this moment. It cannot go here because there is a rook right here. So the king cannot go in front of a rook. That will be an illegal move. It cannot go here neither because there is a pawn that controls that square. So once I play my queen on f3 with a check, notice the king has nowhere to go. It cannot go here because of the rook, of course, and the queen. It cannot go here because of the pawn. And it cannot go up and down because the queen attacks along this file, along the f file. Okay, so that is uh, very good. So now we're getting ready for the tournament. Um, three minutes before the tournament starts. So... Very important, very interesting here. I want to know, okay, 27 people um, in the tournament, 27 participants so far. This is not bad. Um, I might not play in the tournament. I will let you um, have your war. And uh, I will play in the tournament, but maybe, maybe only five games. I might play only five games, okay? Just taking my time. I will not play to try to win the tournament quickly. I will just take my time just to explain what is going on in the tournament okay let's see how that goes because i want i want you to look at the video after um so you can lo learn from your mistakes okay so um some of you might get to play against me maybe not all but some of you for sure will get to play um against me in the tournament okay so i hope that you are lucky to play against me all right because i will be analyzing my game with you and then you could look at that game in the YouTube video and you will be able to learn from your mistakes in the game. OK, and uh, let's see. Let's see how that goes. So now um, if you are planning to win this tournament, yes, I want you to type on the chat one number. What place do you think you are going to come in the tournament? First, second, between one and, and ten. If you are coming first or if you are coming tenth, write the number that you think that you will come in the tournament. So let me just hear some numbers here. Let me just see some numbers. What place are you coming in this tournament between fifth, between first and tenth? Let me see. Some people say third, some people say second, some people say first. Okay. 
A lot of people, very good, very good. This is what I like. People saying first. So this is very, very good. Have confidence. Believe in yourself. The tournament is starting in one minute. So get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Don't forget to hit like. Click like. Like the live. Come on. Like the live session that we are having today. And we are getting ready for the tournament that will start in just one minute. Just one minute. Okay, so I'm only seeing first, third, second. Olivia say last. I don't think so, Olivia. I think you did very well today. By the way, um, um, we our tournament is coming soon. A leeches tournament. We're going to be organizing a leeches tournament. So um, look forward for that. We're going to be sending the information for you to register for our leeches tournament. It uh, will be very easy um, to register, okay? And the tournament will have like a passcode that you cannot share with anyone because that will be only for uh, students of ours, okay? So to make sure that only our students will get to join the tournament. And of course, the registration, you will have to put your name and also your username on the chess. So in that way, when we see the list of players in the tournament, we'll be able to um, know exactly if that person is actually one of our students okay so we're getting ready to start in the tournament good luck everyone good luck everyone and let's go let's go let's go okay let's see who am i going to play first Let me analyze this game who am i going to play first okay i have to play aiden or the blasian aiden okay so i'll play normal here i will berserk though a4, e5, knight f3, very good, control the center. I will play d4. This is called the scotch, okay? And I had sent a video to review this. Let me see who reviewed it. So now this is called the scotch gambit, okay? So the idea is now to create a quick attack against f7. That is, that is just the idea. And see what happens. Let's create a quick attack against f7. Um, black has to try to defend that point, I will still sacrifice, get back the piece, the position is totally equal, no one has an advantage whatsoever, there is no advantage in this position, um, the position is just equal, okay, the position is just equal, and once, once but it, black could feel uncomfortable, the position is equal, but black could end up feeling a bit uncomfortable because the king is in the center, that's all, okay, this is another move, it's a check here, I should have play here actually, uh, this move actually helped him a little bit, but all right, this is fine. Now, my plan here, I want to just cast... Oh, whoa, 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 I will not castle. This is a free queen. You cannot put your king in the same diagonal with your queen. That is just not a good idea. Because if you put your king in the same diagonal with your king, you might get a check that will end up losing your material. Now, all I have to do here is um, castle. I'm now um, looking forward to push in this game. Yes, go after my opponents. That is definitely literally what I will do here. Yes, attack, go after my opponent. Okay, this is a good move by my opponent, by the way. Winning my rook. Very good. Very, very good by Aiden. But it's still a queen done, so I don't think that will work too well still. Okay, attacking now my queen. I'll come here. I don't think this will help much, but okay. I will capture this. I will make sure I develop, bring on my knight. Okay, I bring on my knight. If my opponent captures here, I will recapture. I have one minute and 17 seconds because I berserked in the game. So I have less time. But I still have an advantage. Let me just move my king to the side. And uh, yes, this is what we have at the moment. My opponent is putting a lot of pressure on my pawn, but I want to defend my pawn. And I might play for that pawn. So in general, I might just try to go directly for the king. But in this position, I might actually play for that pawn. So I play knight here, attacking the rook, which is attacking my pawn. And my idea is to just push my pawn forward, opening the diagonal of my queen on that king as well, which is quite interesting. And let's see what where my opponent is going. 
So this move is interesting, but now with that, this move, I could come right here and I am already creating some attacks in this position. Okay, so this position is already becoming... Okay, he's coming here, challenging my queen, but wait a minute, who is defending this rook? Can I just take this? I think I could, so I just took it. And uh, yeah, this is this uh, these are some problems here ready for my opponent. I will attack this rook now. Okay. <clears throat> okay, he goes quite up there. I could play a check here. Or we we'll just push. The idea of pushing is that I could get a queen. I have to be quick. I, I'm really enjoying the game. So I am forgetting about my time. I only have 45 seconds. I could I don't want to lose on time. So what I have to do now is play quickly. So my opponent captures here. I will take this and I will try to play as quickly as possible. My idea is to try to look for a checkmate as soon as possible so I could end up the game. So notice this game was going very good for my opponent. So this is checkmate here. The king cannot go anywhere. So this game was going very good for my opponent, but um, he ended up um, putting his queen in the same diagonal with his king and this is a mistake that you should avoid when you are playing chess okay now let's see i'm right now second in the tournament there is a person that has won two game which is this person here nasir and let's see how that goes 40 minutes left before the tournament is over 40 minutes left before the tournament is over so Don't forget to subscribe. Don't so forget to hit like on the YouTube. Okay. Uh, I'm here waiting. Waiting for the system to put me to play against someone. Like everyone is playing. No game for me as yet. So let's see how that goes. And look at the game of Gabi versus Naruto. Quite interesting. All right, now I have to play against Nasir. Nasir is the one who is leading with four points, and I have to play against him. So let's see how that goes. Nasir is white. I'm playing with the black pieces. I berserk, meaning I cut my time in half. Not I have two minutes, and my opponent has three minutes and 54 seconds. So when I berserk, my idea is to play fast. So he's developing pieces. I'm developing pieces. It's very simple. He brings out a knight. I bring out, bring out also one of my knights. So both of us are bringing up pieces. He brings out his bishop. Here there is a little trick, which is this one. I give away a knight, and my idea is to recover it. So I sacrifice a knight. Oh, he didn't take this, so this is not so good. I will capture over there, and let's see what he will capture with. He captured with this pawn. That was a bit expected. Um, I'll come here. My opponent with this move here is interesting. He could have some ideas of sacrifices. So that will, I want to put my bishop here just in case. And I want to make sure, and, oh, this is not so good. Don't put your bishop in front of my pawns because they will be captured. So if you're going to move your bishops, pay attention where you move your bishops. Don't move your bishops where pawns could capture them, okay? So always pay attention where you put your pieces. Rook comes up there. That doesn't look like a great move. What I will do, I'll just push this pawn forward. This, bish this pawn will attack the bishop, and now this bishop will also attack the rook. So this is like creating a double attack. So my opponent, okay, capture here with the bishop, but now I get to capture this rook over here. So this is definitely not so good for my opponent. My opponent recapture, and I will castle. Now, after castling, I think that my position is, of course, much better and material up in this position. Now, of course, I'm time done because I cut my time in half, but the black pieces already have an advantage. I took a rook. This king cannot castle short, and this king is in the center. And there are some principles here that were not followed. Okay, Nasir, remember, you have to try to develop the pieces, control the center, and castle. So I will take that knight. I do not that want that knight to be attacking me. And now, before anything, I will just check that king. I will attack that king with my rook and see what my opponent does. Where is my opponent going with that king? He moves right in front of his bishop, and now his queen is no longer defending the bishop. So I will capture that bishop. And this is another check. Another check, attacking the king. The king's only move is here. So let's see how long it takes him to figure out that one. Now, this one is interesting because this one ends up in checkmate. I will just capture the queen with a check. The king has to take. He has no option. Then I bring the other rook to check the king. All right, the king has to go here. 
And once the king goes there, this queen rook here is checkmate. And the game is over. Okay, back to tournament. So I hope that you could go back to this video, maybe tomorrow or on the weekend, look at this video and um, try to learn from your mistakes. Okay, so remember to look at the um, video afterwards to learn from your mistakes if you get to play me. Okay, so let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's see um, all of you in action here. Let me see who am I playing with next. Who am I playing with next? Remember, when you are playing the game, control the center, develop your pieces and castle. I'm playing against um, Chang. If not mistaken, this is a pupil from Maria Regina. I think he is the best in the class at the moment. So let's see how is his game going. So he's playing this move. This is the Petrov defense. Quite interesting. And... Uh, here he shouldn't take my pawn, he should actually attack my knight, I will go back and then he could get to take the pawn, okay, that is how the um, Petrov defense is played. Um, so it's, it's quite an interesting um, opening. Okay, now he is defending, he's attacking my knight with his bishop. Um, so what I will do, I'll just come here attacking this bishop, I want to attack this bishop to see what is going on. He of course could capture here, but he didn't. Quite interesting. I will just start developing my pieces, and I will. I will. I should have eliminated this bishop, though. I will eliminate the bishop now. I don't want that bishop to be there. That should have been my move, and then this pawn here. Maybe eliminate the bishop and then bring on my next bishop. Maybe. Okay, so he bring out the bishop with a check. So I will block with my pawn, attacking his bishop, and then I will get to develop my bishop and then castle. So he play bishop there. Yeah, this is getting his. And tricky but I will play bishop here getting ready to castle so control the center develop your pieces and castle that is how you are supposed to um, play the game so he plays this move here quite interesting I will pin this knight here to the queen so notice I have my knight out my bishop out my other bishop out controlling the center and I'm looking to castle. Now, what I have, what is, I'm noticing in this game is that my opponent is not playing bad at all. And for that reason, I have to pay attention to my time. If my opponent is playing very badly, then um, I could I could get to win quickly the game. All right. But if my opponent is playing good, I have to literally um, destroy my opponent's defenses. And that takes time. Oh, no, this move is not so good because I could just capture that. And this is protected and plus there is a bishop here attacking the queen so in this way i managed to get a queen and if i'm playing against you and i manage to get your queen then you will be in big trouble because now i have a queen to attack and you don't have a piece on the board that has the same power of my queen meaning that you will have to rely on other pieces that are not as strong as the queen now this knight was defending this bishop so therefore i could win this bishop now so this is what happens in this kind of games, actually. Now, this could be a check here, but how will I continue? I have to. My knight will just be the enemy. Yes. Let me just play the check. I cannot attack that at the moment. The king can only move here. But now my knight is in a very, very strange position. So let me just push this here. Now my knight is looking, looking fishy. I put my knight there and now what to do with my knight? Why did I put my knight there? I have 51 seconds and let's see what I do from this position. I have to try to castle. I have to also try to bring out my knight. I have a big advantage because I, am, um, I have a queen up in the position. Continue pushing this pawn. But um, the problem here is time. Now I, I have to pay attention to my time. That is all I have to pay a lot of attention to. Let's see where this king is moving. He's bringing his knight out here. I will just bring on my next knight. And let's see what could be a route for this knight trying to get to checkmate my opponent's king. Okay, so he's going there. I will, I will castle. I will castle. And now I will attack this, threatening to checkmate my opponent with this move. He will have to push here to save himself, but that means this check will come in and he will lose the rook. So this position is actually 
not so good for my opponent. So he moves to the side. I will capture here with a check and uh, move to the side again. Okay, I'll come here. I'm trying to come here to see if I could checkmate my opponent. I have 24 seconds. I have to hurry up, literally hurry up. So let's see. But I don't think my opponent could escape from this one. Okay, this is very difficult to escape from. He could defend here with the rook. But I'll bring out my knight now. So, yeah, the position is very difficult for black to, to play. To be honest, I'm threatening checkmate right here. And, yeah, that's the only move. Now I come here with the knight. This is a possible check it's with a sacrifice. This is another possible check. And this is this is perhaps the strongest one. This one is a, a very good check now for me. I will now take this um, take this rook. And I have 12 seconds, but yeah, the game is over after this move. Very good. Um Chang, good game. I only had 10 seconds left. Back to the tournament. Okay, so. I have played three games so far, and I could say that some of you are playing a good game. But some of you are forgetting to castle, so don't forget to castle. Because that means to, chess has three stages, okay? Three stages. The opening, the middle game, and the end game. In the opening, you're supposed to control the center, bring out your pieces, and castle. And you finish with the opening. Now, if you bring out two pieces only... And then you start attacking with those two pieces only, then you have not finished the opening. You know what I mean? So you jump into an attack without finishing a phase of the game. Meaning that that could give you a lot of problems afterwards. Okay, so I have to play Aiden. Yeah. I'm here with the black pieces. I cut my time in half once more. This, this is fear. I mean, I cut my time in half. So my opponent actually has a chance to, to win because he has he has more time in the position. Literally, that is what that is what it is. So he comes here to defend. This position is quite interesting. He has possibility of playing f4, of playing um, bishop c4, but he's decided to, to go quiet with this move and let's see how this goes here. Bishop c4. This move is interesting, but I have this little trick here. This old trick by um, Jose Raul Capablanca, a formal Capablanca, a former world champion. And now I'm going to just get back my piece. So this is the idea. I give away the knight, and now I create a double attack, and I'm going to get back one of my pieces. Okay. So this is a good experience for uh, the children because they get to play against me. I am a, a FIDE master, okay, former national champion of Trinidad and Tobago. And this actually will be very good for... Um, the kids to learn about the game. So what I will do, I will capture, I should capture this one, you know. Uh, I will capture the knight. And then I will cast, I will, I should have taken the queen, but I want to keep the queen on the board to attack. Taking the queen was the, objectively speaking, the best move, but nah, I want to attack. Okay, so this is an interesting move by my opponent. Literally, my opponent is really playing here to try to win the game, and I like that. So now I have 1 minute and 28 seconds to try to turn this game that is very equal. Like, there's no advantage for anyone here, at least not like you see about. And I have to take this game into a victory in a in few minutes. So this is the challenge of this kind of stuff. Okay, that move... Mm, I do not like too much. I will attack this bishop immediately. I wonder if he will sacrifice. Sacrifice, take, I take, I move here. Nice. He doesn't have enough to sacrifice. He will not be able to pull enough pieces inside. Oh, oh, he missed this one here. Oh, that would have been a good move for him. Let me just come here. He had knight here. Was interesting. Although I could have taken here. Mm, nothing, nothing too complicated. Okay, but my rook will be definitely his if he would have done that move. Okay, so now um, let's see how things are going here. So this position is um, fairly, equ fairly equal, as I was saying before. And uh, now I have to, again, as I said, try to push for the win here. And my opponent is using the correct strategy. When you are playing in this kind of position, the wrong strategy is to try to attack 
to try to attack um, quickly. Trying to attack quickly is the wrong strategy. And your correct strategy is to actually take your time. Because when you take your time, I have to think. If you play fast and bad, then I have no need to think. But if you are, oh, look at that move, it's not good. You play a check, but you put your queen right in front of my bishop. Definitely not a good move. Definitely not a good move. Everything was going good, but after that move, now notice you have given me your queen, and now I have a big advantage. And without your queen, I could just go all in for the attack. Your best idea, your best chance was to just remain there, holding your position, putting pressure, and making sure that I didn't get an advantage like that. That is the way to win. That's the way to win. The way to win is not to play fast and try to make me lose on time. The best idea, if you want to make me lose the game on time, play a strong game. So it will not be easy for me to win. If it's not easy to me, for me to win, then it's difficult. And therefore, I will, I will have, to take, I have to take my time during the game. And that is what actually you want. Okay. So now my pawn is attacking the bishop. The bishop is protected. And come here, I'm creating a little threat here. I was creating the pawn, but the threat was actually checkmate on h2. My opponent didn't see it and end up losing the game. Back to tournament. Quite interesting game. Quite interesting game. I see that Aiden is really, really pushing to try to win the tournament against me, but I have to play him now. And so I could maybe try to eliminate his um, streak. Aiden might be like, wow, I have to play coach again. I didn't want to play him, but let's go Aiden, let's go. Let's go, you have the white pieces. Oh. This is called the re Lopez, okay? Very, very strategic opening, the re Lopez. I wonder if you will want to take that, that, oh, he didn't take it. I already developed my pieces. I wonder if he will want to take it. He didn't take it again, so I'll come here. Let me just defend my pawn. Okay, very good, very good opening choice by Aiden. Why? Because this is very solid setup for, for white and it's very difficult to win. So I have to really play fast. I have to pay attention to what is going on. I, will, I should take that, but I will just move back. I don't want to exchange anything just so. I'll just take my time. I'll come here. My opponent looks like he wants to castle long. So I, I, hasn't, I have not castled yet neither because I want to see where he's going with that king. See, where he is going with his king. If he's going long, I will go long. If he goes short, I go short. So I will follow. I will follow his castle. So he went this way. Oh, I cannot come here. Let me pin him here. And uh, looking forward, I'm looking forward to castling. I'm looking forward to castling long as well. All right. He goes there. I will cast long. Okay. And let's see. How do we win this? This position is very difficult. I mean, it's not like difficult, like um, how to explain. This position is very difficult to win. Like, get this position into a victory is difficult because um, the whole point is that it's very solid. It's very solid for my opponent. This position is very solid. I need to move my king here. In this kind of position, your king should go and hide in the corner. So my opponent is some minutes... Um, okay, if I play here, he has this check, I move... I will go with this move. Eh? Let me see where, where my opponent goes. Let me see where my opponent goes. I have this move here. Yeah, I have this move. This should give, this should win material for me, definitely. This should be winning the night. Okay, that's a, just a check. I will capture this. Yeah. So, yes, when you move your knights to the corners, you have to make sure that your knight has a place to return to. If your knight doesn't have a place to return to, you may end up in trouble. And now, with a knight up, I will see how much I can do to win this position. Now I'm just targeting um, points in my, oppo in my opponent's camp. Literally just targeting points here. Um, but it's not easy. My opponent is really um, playing a good game. So I have to literally take my time to try to win the position. It's not going to just win easily. Need to try to open up the position against my opponent. So let's see what my opponent will play here. Uh, clever move, clever move. I'll come here. Can I push here? I'll push here. 
the idea of this push is that I want to um, create some problems in the position. Literally, that's the idea. Yes. Just open up where the where the king is. I could capture here with a check, but he will block with the queen, forcing some exchanges. Will he be forcing exchanges or not? Not really. Check. Exchanges are not really forced, per se. I could come here and avoid exchanges because I'm pinning the I'm pinning the king. Okay, now that move is not okay. Here, what can I play? I'll play this move here, threatening this. Okay, I have only I only have here 36 seconds, and Eden is playing very solid. So he's just doing exactly what he's supposed to do. I will play here with a check to see where he's going. Aiden is really looking forward to um to win this game. I have 32 seconds and my opponent has a lot of time. But here I will win another piece, which is this, this rook in the back there, which is actually quite good for me. If it goes down, I will play a check and then take the rook. And uh, yeah, this position is definitely problematic for white. I, I try to see if I could just finish up um, this game. It's not going to be easy, but I will try to capture this one. Now I'm threatening to win the queen. So, yeah, this position is definitely um, trouble for the white pieces. This is threat, queen, rook, a2, and that will win the queen. But moving the queen is trouble as well. So this position is literally lost, although my opponent has um, time here. Oh, quite interesting move. Quite good, quite a good move, I would say. Um, I'll come here with my knight. Oh, I have 18 seconds. Threaten not to bring my knight forward with a check okay this is a check here let me see where my opponent is going i have another check here let's see where he's going where he is going that king yeah this is very very bad position here for white white is in big trouble and he resigns he resigns okay back to tournament and yeah we have 19 minutes left in the tournament very good game Eden Eden is is playing good i mean um, to win against him, I have to actually work. So I hope that he keeps that consistency. All right. Um, just try not to play uh, too reckless, you know. Watch a little bit more your moves. Watch out for tactics, okay? So that is the idea to play. So I have to play now with the kings. Let's see. Oh, I didn't berserk. Let's see how this goes. We play now here the a little bit of the... Italian game. I'll go for the classical Italian. Oh, this move. I'll just play conservative here. I'm not going to try to do anything or try to fall into anything. Um, these players are always finding some kind of trick in the position, in the game. Some kind of tricky thing to work with. But I will find my own tricks as well. Okay, this move. No, I come in here. I will keep my pieces on the board. I will keep my pieces on the board. Develop my pieces. Develop my pieces. Now I'm going forward with this move. Let's see how that goes. How that goes in the game. Okay, you could have that one. I'll go forward with this one. Can I? Okay, you want to come with this knight here. Pin that knight so that knight doesn't go anywhere. That knight of yours is not going to come against me easily, my friend. I will take this for sure. And then I should castle. Castle is always a good move. Castle. Now I'm just baiting my opponent to castle too, you know. That's the idea. Bait my opponent to castle. My opponent castle, my opponent will be in trouble. I'll capture with the pawn. Let's defend this pawn, open this file in case my opponent decides to capture. To castle uh, short now this attacks the queen my opponent here is already um, on the verge of starting the suffering so the suffering of my opponent could start very very quickly here so my opponent cannot castle short he cannot castle long and yes this is a game to um, enjoy afterwards let's see what move will my opponent play here it's not going to be easy um, a lot of things on the attack in this position. The, the main problem of my opponent in this position, my opponent tactically is, is doing very good. Strategically, is having some problems. For example, these are weak pawns. Okay, These are pawns that have to be protected by pieces. And I'm targeting those pawns. So my next move, my next threat is, 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 is 
queen takes. And my opponent has to deal with that. So he moved there. I capture here now. And I am attacking the rook and attacking the knight. He defends this, but this, this is a knight now. See, now I'm attacking. And this is this is problem here already. You know, I'm attacking this. And uh, my opponent has to um, defend against that, I would say. I will capture. Should I capture this one? Or wait a minute. Should I attack that queen? I have so many things that I could do here. I will play this check here because I want to capture these to create a lot of pressure on this pawn here. This is this is my idea. Capture this one, and now there is a lot of pressure on this pawn here. You know, so I, when I'm playing chess, I want to play very active. Okay, very and a very active game to so create a lot of threats. So this is these are things that my opponent will have to definitely worry about you see now he has to bring his rook there to defend and uh yeah that was the whole point of it now here i will bring my next rook here which is quite an interesting move i wonder if my opponent could do that if i play here i play rook there i take here rook, queen takes i don't know maybe he can maybe not i don't know maybe it is a possibility but okay, here I will take definitely this one here. And if you take my queen, I will take this one. I think I could take this one. And uh, the whole point of this move, okay, I don't know if this is working or not. Eh? Maybe I blunder and lose the game, but I think this should work. If it takes my queen with his rook, I will take his queen. But if it takes there, I take here with a check. And this is the whole point. It's a check. So because it's a check, you have to, you have to deal with it. And that's the whole point. And there I have another check here. That you also have to deal with. And then I have another check here. That you also have to deal with. And this will end up in checkmate. So yeah, very good game. Uh, literally, it's, is, um, uh, the kind of player, depending on the player that you are playing. In this case, against this opponent. I had to use like a lot of strength to win the game. I have to actually use tactics. See a whole bunch of moves ahead in order to win the game. Because the opponent is posting a lot of um, tactical complications and it's also creating threats so literally it's putting me to work and during the game okay again against um eden another game against eden and i start with e4 this time again we have 14 more minutes 14 more minutes those in the live um thank you for being here i hope that you are enjoying the live okay i hope that you are enjoying the live Hope that you are doing good. Aiden resigned. He didn't want to play against me, so that's fine. What I will do, I will pause. I will pause. It has 13 minutes. If I pause now, someone could pass me, definitely. I will play one more game, and then I will pause. All right? I'll play one more game, and then I will pause. Um, Aiden looked like he could. He will end up in second place. It depends because he will have to face the Kings, and the Kings are doing good. They are playing good. So let's see how that goes. How that goes. So... The, the Blessian Eden, don't put yourself on pause. Go back to the tournament, play. You are in second place, second place. So the places are the following. I am in first place. Second place is the Blessian Eden. The Kings is third. Artin is fourth. Gabi is fifth. Edithin is sixth. So, yeah. Some of your usernames are, are difficult to, to pronounce, okay? All right, guys, keep playing, Aiden. Remember, you're in second place. You don't want anyone to pass you. Okay, my opponent here um, lost. So I will just put myself on pause. I'll pause and let you all continue with the game. 12 more minutes to go, so I will take a little rest. If one of you passes 25 points then i may just wake back up and jump back into the tournament if someone of you play passes 25 just to make sure i keep try to keep the lead all right keep it up keep it up remember to share the live okay remember to share the live remember to hit like button hit the like button on the live Okay, Aiden already went up to 22. Imagine that. Imagine that. And Aiden is playing against Adriana. That is a good match. Because Adriana is a good player. 
So, and Aiden is a good player, so let's see who will win this match, okay? So Aiden will have to take his time here, play good moves, do not play a lot of risky moves trying to win quickly, because winning quickly will not happen, you, are, you may end up blundering. So take your time, you are playing against a strong opponent, anytime you guys play against a strong opponent, you have to take your time, you shouldn't try to play too quickly, okay? Alright. So Adriana is in third place and Aiden is in second place. Adriana, I think, long, uh, joined the tournament a bit late. Adriana is looking forward to disrupting Aiden's pieces a little bit. Aiden now sends his knight to the corner, which is not the best knight, the best place for the knight, but is actually attacking a pawn. So it's not bad. Aiden's knight is attacking this pawn. So what I will do, I will just click on that game and just follow. So Adriana now plays knight, attacking the queen and the bishop. Aiden brings out the queen, and let's see what Adriana will respond. What will be Adriana's response to this move? Okay. Aiden is still threatening this pawn, is still creating, still has threats. Aiden still has threats in this position. And another threat is pawn push. That, that pawn push is a serious threat because then, yeah, then if the knight moves, the queen falls, but the knight could move attacking Aiden's queen. So it's not over. The position is just, this kind of position are not easily one like that. I mean, the knight, the knight could move attacking the queen, um, and that could be interesting, you know, move attacking the queen, and the bishop, if bishop takes, knight takes, okay, that, okay, yeah, but, yeah, it, literally, that, that is what I was thinking it would happen, and, uh, okay, this is tricky, yeah, if you take, he takes, if you take, But at the end, Aiden ended up with a pawn up, but Adriana has the pair of bishops. So, quite an interesting position here. Quite an interesting position. He could end up being based on time. You see, what happened here is that Aiden berserk, meaning he cut his time in half. And now he's forced to have to win this game in one minute. While Adriana even has increment. Adriana even has increment in the position. And uh, literally, she has the upper hand because of, her, of the increment. He has more time to think, and she actually miss moves. I mean, I mean, bishop check here was literally winning the knight, but she didn't play bishop check. But yes, this position, of course, Aiden has the advantage in materially, materially speaking, in, at this point, and uh, yeah, but Adriana has more time, so yeah, this will be. This will be quite interesting match to watch. Time um, versus, you know, versus material. Literally, time versus material. And uh, yeah, that is that is a problem. Let's see what Adriana will play here. This was a check. Let's see. Moving. I didn't like that move too much, but let's see. Aiden looking to exchange pieces. Aiden has 25 seconds. Adriana has... Aiden shouldn't try to exchange rooks, actually. His strategy instead of exchanging rooks should have been something like... Maybe looking to checkmate the black king. But now... Okay, that's a, a good trick to see if Adriana will capture the wrong pawn. But okay, she didn't. Aiden has only 15 seconds. And uh, yeah, she has to try to uh, make the best out of those um, seconds. Knight is now hanging, and uh, uh, Adriana didn't take the knight. The knight. Okay. Eleven seconds. This is not so good. Eleven seconds. Not so good. Adriana has two minutes, and um, this is the point where I say Berserk should not have been the idea. No, Adriana is actually winning on everything. Aiden could have tried for a little stalemate, but didn't go for it, trying to stalemate himself. But now it's uh, difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. Adriana end up, end up winning the game. So if you are playing against someone that has a good rating, you shouldn't try to berserk. Just play a normal game with all the time and take your time. Um, one of the mistakes that could happen to us in a chess game is underestimating your opponent. 
even if if I'm playing against you all online, when I'm playing here against you in this tournament, I take you very seriously. You may not think so, but I take you very seriously. I do not just underestimate you and say, oh, I will just win easy the game. No, no. I pay attention to what you are doing because I don't want to just blunder. Okay. And even though if I'm making a mistake or not, I'm, I'm still trying to my best to avoid um, making mistakes. Okay. So it is very important that you do not underestimate your opponent. Okay. It's very important that you do not underestimate your opponent. So, so far, Eden is still in second place, so that is good, I mean, and uh, he has only taken um, four losses, I think three came from me, I think three came from me, I do not know, not totally sure as yet, but there are only six minutes, well, five minutes and something, I'm going to say six minutes remaining in the tournament, so um, definitely this tournament will be over um, soon, soon the tournament will be over. And uh, we have to see um, who end up in second place. As I say, I'm trying to work to keep my um, first place. Oh, wow. This end up in checkmate by Aiden against Gabby. Gabby, very good, Aiden. Aiden on the attack, reach up to 25 points. I have to watch uh, because Aiden may want to go and win two games quickly. I will be monitoring... Um, Aiden's, Aiden's game, or Aiden may end up passing me in the tournament. He's getting me worried already. Aiden got to 25 points. He's 8 points away from me, meaning 2 berserks and he could pass me. Where is he? He's not in a game yet. I wonder if the parents are closed. I don't think so. But the parents will be closed, yes. No. Did he get into a game yet? I think there, there are no opponents for him. Come on, Aiden. You want like you want to win the tournament. You want to leave me out. Don't do that. Okay, Aiden is playing white again against Adriana. Another another hard game. So yes, today is going to be um it's a tr interesting game for the tournament. Very interesting tournament. Adriana come with 23 points. Aiden has 25 points. So this is what is going on here. Adriana has to try to uh, win this game to take second place. Aiden, all Aiden has to do is either draw or win. Draw or win, okay? Or if the minutes pass, if four minutes pass and Aiden hasn't lost, he will still be in second place. So he has a little advantage. He has more to play with. But Adriana for sure is... Um, is doing well in the tournament so far and she has to try to put pressure on Aiden for this game that's an interesting move capture here very interesting move by Adriana um actually looking forward to win a rook to winning a rook not easy not easy at all but let's see what will happen here let me see if Aiden could find complications and Aiden had berserk again and that was another problem again Aiden berserk against Adriana which is a strong opponent. Okay, Eden Berserk against Adriana, which is a strong opponent. Adriana is just defending, holding, 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 making it a bit difficult to, to crack. She's that type of player that you will have to play a good game to beat her. <clears throat> okay. Very interesting game. Just open it. You have to see the whole, the whole game going on. Okay, h5 is played now. Um, but in this position, as you may notice, Adriana has more, um, more material. A bit more material. And that, that has to do with the berserk part of the game. Yeah. The berserk actually end up favoring um, Adriana in the position. And material up, no problems about exchanging. Like Aiden, so remember, remember the lesson. The lesson for today, Aiden, is the following. It's, it's a very simple one. Anytime you play against a strong opponent, do not berserk. Don't bother to berserk because they are playing at your same level. They are playing at your same level. You cannot give them half points to someone that is playing against at your same level. Like if I'm going to play against another 
Fide Master, for example. If I'm going to play against another Fide Master, and I give that other Fide Master a berserk, like I cut my time in half, the possibilities of me losing that game are extremely high. Because if we are playing around the same level, and on top of that, I give them, man, we're playing again around the same level, and on top of that, I give them half of my points. Yeah, half of my time. Definitely, that's a problem. So, Aiden with 23 seconds. One minute before the tournament is over. One minute before the tournament is over. So, this session was... Um, has been very good. I have, I, uh, I have enjoyed it. So let's see how that goes. Let's see how that goes. Adriana with the black pieces. Eden has a chance, but no more. He had a chance, but Adriana didn't let it slide at all. If Adriana had taken the knight, Eden has a chance. But this, the rook coming back, yeah. Is the position is just it's just very difficult for white. The king is is it looks exposed, but it's well guarded by his pieces. It's well guarded by his pieces. Aiden is having some troubles here. Adrian even has yeah, that move is a strong move because that move literally wins the and that check just drops the queen. Yeah. Yeah, so Good, good tournament, Aiden. But remember, you have to when you're playing against people of your same level, you have to make sure and um, take your time more. All right. Well, guys, that is all. Almost all for today. Yeah, that's all for today. Who? Where's the result of the tournament? Result of the tournament. Okay. So yes, the tournament is over. Thank you. Thanks to all of you for um, for your participation in the tournament. In the online class and everything and uh, i will see you um, next week monday maybe maybe on friday maybe on friday i will do another stream maybe all right so look forward for that one take care and have a good night bye bye